Hello everybody. I'm very excited for today's video because we are going to test a motherboard that I've had laying around in a box for two years or so. And uh, I'm very excited because this motherboard is uh, going to be kind of nostalgic for me. This is an Asus model A7V8XX and it's a socket A board from 2003. So it's probably got uh, most likely an Athlon XP in it. And it's a motherboard that's based on the VIA KT400 chipset. And a socket A motherboard of this era based on a VIA chipset is nostalgic for me because the first new computer I ever had, I got for Christmas in 2004. This is a custom built computer with an AMD Semperon. 2500 plus processor at 1.75 gigahertz 512 megabytes of ram and an ati rage 128 pro video card and this is also the computer i use to make my youtube videos and i had that computer until 2010 or so i think and it was a custom built system that had a gigabyte board and that was based on the VIA KM400 chipset. Uh, the VIA KM400 is the same as the KT400, it's just the KM400 has onboard graphics via Unichrome graphics. Kind of a ho-hum uh, token effort graphics chip. This board based on the KT400, same base chipset, but there is no onboard graphics. So we are forced to uh, install our own AGP or PCI graphics card, which is cool. But I love that computer. Obviously, the first new computer I ever had, uh, it was years newer than the computer it replaced, which was some sort of compact Presario. Uh, like a low profile case saying I, I only had it for a little while and then I accidentally did something that butchered the Windows installation and I was extremely sad. Um, so I just went without a computer at that time. I was 10 years old um, and then I got that computer. Uh, a lightning strike took out that computer and it was replaced by another custom built computer which had a different motherboard by a different manufacturer but still based on the VIA KM400 chipset. So uh, it's very nostalgic for me, a, a socket A board based on a VIA, a VIA chipset of this era. So uh, when this one was given to me a couple of years ago, uh, I've kept it around, I've never tested it. I really hope it works. I'll be kind of bummed if it doesn't, but at the same time, I've got too many computers already. But that's uh, going to be today's video. We're going to test this thing, see if it works. I've got an empty case to put it into, and uh, I've got a GPU lined up for it. And uh, if it works, we're going to put Windows XP on it. We're going to install all the original Asus drivers and uh, play around with uh, a piece of my childhood. Luckily, I do have the I.O. shield for this motherboard. Here it is. And uh, I've got a case lined up for it. Let me show you. And here it is. What? Did I just tear apart the computer we played with in the last video? No, it's sitting right there. I actually have two of these. Uh, you should recognize this. This is the case that used to house my main computer. Now, I've never mentioned it before. Uh, but, uh, last year, or maybe it's been a couple of years, I don't remember, I actually bought a new case and moved my main computer into the case. There it is right there. I actually taped a video way back when I did it. I've just never gotten around to editing it. But, uh, yeah, this is what housed my, uh, main computer. Uh, someday I will get to that video about, uh, building uh, about putting the new, the computer in, in the new case, or maybe I won't and I'll just scrap it. I, I don't know yet, but, uh, we're going to use this case. Now, I wish I didn't have to use this case because of course this motherboard's from 2003. This case is from 2010 or thereabouts. It's way too new. doesn't fit the aesthetic in my opinion, but it's all I got, unfortunately. 
Um, the only other case I have is a mini tower case that only fits a micro ATX motherboard. This is a full size ATX motherboard. So this is my only choice. I do have that old white A open case that would fit this motherboard, but that's already housing my Pentium 4 motherboard. But maybe someday I'll switch it up and I'll actually move out that board and move this one in. But at least for the purposes of today, we'll put it into this case. So, like I said, I don't know, I don't even know what CPU is installed on this motherboard. Um, but we'll go over what we know about it just visually. It's got an AGP slot, I assume that's 8x. We have six PCI slots, lots of room for uh, expansion cards. Via KT400 chipset, I already found out that information online. Two IDEs, got a floppy controller, ATX power, it's got three RAM slots, it takes DDR RAM, it's already got 512 megabytes installed, which is great. We'll, uh, we'll start with that and then uh, add more if we want to, if everything works. And when I got the board, it had a lot of bent pins for the jumpers and stuff, so I took some time and unbent the stuff. That's what makes me a little worried that this board might not work. Uh, I don't think it was stored in the safest of conditions. I think it did get bumped around a lot before it was given to me, and I probably bumped it around even more. Um, but if we look on the back, it's got PS2 ports, spit of digital audio out, uh, parallel and serial ports, it's got some USB ports, got some Ethernet, and we've got our analog audio. So, very good. And then, I'm going to have to take this cooler off because there's what I'm guessing is a uh, thermal sensor running in under the heat sink. And it terminates in this little header. And I have no idea where on this board it would go, if anything. Uh, maybe it doesn't go anywhere on this board. Maybe this plugged into some sort of uh, fan controller expansion card, maybe. Well, that wouldn't make much sense because the CPU fan's going straight into the motherboard. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to quickly look up the manual, see if there's anything about a thermal sensor or a place to plug a thermal sensor is. If there isn't, we'll remove this cooler and uh, just get that out of there, get these floating wires out of the way. Well, there was nothing in the manual about support for an external thermal sensor, so we'll remove this heat sink so I can get this temperature sensor out of there. And uh, we'll see what CPU we have as well, because I don't know what we have. Drum roll. Oh, it's not an Athlon XP. It's an ordinary Athlon. Wow. She's an oldie. Does it say how fast? It's funny. It's got a warranty void sticker that sits on top of the CPU and the and the socket. Let me, let me show you that. So this CPU was actually installed at the factory or whatever. Thermal compound is turned to clay, of course. And that thermal sensor seems to be actually underneath this warranty void if remove sticker. So I guess we'll remove it and void our warranty. It's actually under the CPU itself. So I've got to take out the CPU. Wow. Huh. Let me show you this. So it, it appears that this thermal sensor was is is original to the CPU and thusly to the motherboard. But again, there's there's nowhere on the motherboard where this would have plugged in. So I guess there must have been some sort of expansion card, maybe a fan controller or something. Maybe this came out of a pre-built computer. I I don't know, but I'm going to remove it cuz we have no use for it and it's just kind of dangling there. But, uh, here's our CPU, an original Athlon. I won't repaste it yet. I mean, the paste is pretty hard, but I won't repaste it yet because we don't know if the, uh, 
motherboard is even any good. So I'll just put it back together. We'll put the motherboard in the case, test it, and if everything works out, then I'll go ahead and repaste it. There she is. Looks pretty good in there. I've hooked up front panel audio, front panel USB, and the uh, buttons and lights. Uh, there's no polarity marking, so I don't know if I got the lights hooked up right. We'll find out later. This enormous case fan was something I put in back, of course, when I was using this as the case for my main computer. Uh, it's got a bodge job on it. Anyway, I'm, I'm not even going to bother hooking it up for now. I found an IDE DVD RW drive and I found a black floppy drive to fit to uh, replace the white one that was in there. Now, of course, eagle eyed viewers will notice we're missing something pretty crucial, and that's a power supply. So, the first power, so I, I've got a few power supplies. I got like three spares. And uh, this was one that I got a few months ago. And I've never actually, I have no idea if this even works. I've never seen it work. I don't even know what it came out of, but it was given to me. It's a PC power and cooling silencer, 310 ATX, 310 watts. It's just a whittle baby, but it should be good enough for us. Uh, I get nervous with old power supplies now after I had a catastrophic power supply failure occur in a piece of hardware I got last year. First catastrophic power supply failure I've ever seen. Uh, so it makes me a little nervous now. So I think what I might do is uh, just go ahead, open this thing up, just visually inspect, look for any bulging capacitors or other problems. And then uh, we'll plug it in without it being hooked up to the motherboard or anything and and just make sure it doesn't explode when power's applied to it. PC power and cooling, they're still around. Um, but they I think they only really cater to the industrial and commercial PC markets now. They They are still making ATX power supplies, but they're not marketed towards consumers. I feel like maybe they were never really, they never really catered to the consumer market, but I, I know back in the day, I knew some people on YouTube and stuff that had PC power and cooling power supplies in their computers, so maybe they did, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, let's open this guy up and see what it looks like. Well, here's what she looks like. Everything seems to check out visually. No bulging capacitors. No capacitors with brown crud coming out the bottom of them. Not that that means... That doesn't always mean much. Uh, the capacitor in the power supply that catastrophically failed on me looked perfect until it was uh, spewing liquid oil all over the inside of the device it was in and filling my apartment full of white smoke that smelled like vegetable oil. Um, so... Yeah, but at least visually it looks okay. Date on the PCB is July 15th, 2003. So this is actually a period correct power supply for better or for worse. Fire in the hole. Okay. I mean, it's not actually running right now, but, you know, it's energized at least. There's the power supply installed, plugged into the motherboard. Now, at this point, uh, I think I want to plug it in, turn it on, just make sure it actually does stuff, make sure we get some post beeps. I, I don't even have a video card installed yet, we still have to sort that out. However, uh, it should give us some uh, post error beeps. And uh, that's what I'm checking for, just to make sure the motherboard's alive and to make sure the power supply still doesn't have any more shenanigans to give us. Fire in the hole again. And I'm going to hit the power button. Okay. Cool. That is a very good start. So the next question is... What do I use for a video card? Now, I don't have nearly as much choice in AGP cards as I do PCI Express cards. But I have a couple, and so this is the one I chose. 
It's an NVIDIA GeForce 4 MX430. It is a low-end OEM card. This would have come out of a pre-built computer of some sort. I don't know how I got my hands on it anymore. No longer remember. Um, but it's a very simple card. It's got 64 uh, megs of memory on board. And uh, apparently the GeForce 4 uh, MX series of cards were actually based on the GeForce 2 core. Um, which was kind of a bummer to people, especially if they actually bought these cards retail back in the day. Uh, you know, you get your new video card home and you find out it's based on the tech of a year ago or even two years ago. Um, so it, it's kind of a cruddy card for the time. This card's from 2004, I think. Um, so is it great? No. Is it perfect for what we're doing? Heck yeah. Now, unfortunately... It's only got a DVI port on it. It's got a television output as well, actually. But uh, it's only got a DVI monitor port on it. My other AGP card only has DVI as well. And I don't have a DVI to VGA adapter at the moment. I have one. It's at the TV station. I'm too lazy to go and get it. So I guess what I'll do is log over my giant 21 inch 1600 by 1200 monitor. I'll bring it over here so we can hook it up and it'll work fine for what we're doing. Video card is installed. My inappropriately large and high resolution monitor is hooked up. Let's hit the power button and hope we get some life on the monitor. Okay, so I'm going to have to look up what that uh, beep code means. One moment. Well, apparently this is my third or fourth time attempting to boot this thing. Apparently that beep code means uh, a bad video card or video card not detected. So I've tried reseeding the video card a few times. Still makes that code. So the only thing I can think to try for now is try the other AGP card I have. Uh, which is a much cooler card and I was going to save it for, you know, if I ever got uh, uh, a different computer. But it's this, it's an ATI All-in-Wonder 7500. It's an ATI Radeon 7500 with a built-in television tuner as well as television input and output connectors. Pretty neat card. An All-in-Wonder was something I always wanted as a kid. This is the first one I've ever gotten. Uh, but it's got, I think, 64 uh, megs of memory. This card's older. It's from probably 2001, I think. Once again, DVI only, but we will switch these cards out right quick and uh, try the other one. All right, let's give this card a try. Oh dear. So now the question becomes, do I have a bad AGP slot or a bad motherboard in general? Uh... I can try a PCI video card. I don't know if I have any uh, here. Let me check. I found this very old Matrox Millennium card from 1997. This is something else I got a year or two ago and I've never tested it. This would actually be a good card for maybe my Socket 7 system. But I'll stick this in a PCI slot and see if it works. Of course, now I'm too lazy to switch back to the VGA monitor or to get a VGA cable to plug into this. So I'll just power on the computer with a monitor connected and see what it does. Oops. Well, well, well. Huh. Huh. So now the question becomes... Do I have a bad, do I have two bad AGP cards somehow, or do I have a bad AGP slot? If it does have a bad AGP slot, I uh, might just choose not to keep this motherboard. Hmm. 
Well, I guess now I get to plug in a monitor and uh, see what it shows on the screen. Well, there it is with that very old PCI video card, complete with uh, spelling mistakes. Uh, I don't have a keyboard hooked up, uh, but let me shut it off and hook one up and then we'll uh, take a look. Oh, interesting. Now it's not coming to life at all. It's just making a clicking sound from the speaker. Or the buzzer. Well, holy cow. All I did was shut it off to plug in a keyboard. I turned it back on. No sign of life now. Even with a video card removed, there's no error beeps. You just turn it on, it makes a click from the buzzer, and that's it. I wonder if this motherboard has finally bit the dust. Okay, it's some time later, and I've <laughs> I've booted up, I've turned this thing on and off so many times. I, I um, tried everything I could think. I, I reseated the CPU, reseated the RAM, and... Uh, it's about one out of all the times I turned it on and off it, it did successfully post again once but when the BIOS beep uh, beeped it was almost a crackly sounding beep so it, it really sounds like this motherboard may have an issue however I did some googling and I came across one person whose uh, a7 v8x board was doing the same thing and it turned out to be a bad power supply. They, swa they uh, swapped out the power supply and the computer booted up. Now I've tested all the voltages on this. And uh, aside from the typical like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 volt sag on the 5 volt and 12 volt rails. Everything checks out. All, all the voltages seem fine. Certainly fine enough that it should work. But... Uh, I will do what this person did that worked. I will find another power supply and stick it in here and see what it does. Well, here's our next power supply that I've had for a few years and have never tested. I actually bought this one at a thrift store in a box. It was labeled as is. It was in the box for a thermal take uh, power supply. Um, but this is not a thermal take power supply, but I bought it for five bucks at a thrift store. It's a best tech, the mark of quality, 288 watts. Who boy. Well, uh, we'll give this one a little non-hooked up test to make sure it doesn't explode. So I think I'm even more nervous about this one. Fire in the hole. Very well. Well, I, I won't even install it. I'll just sit it on here or somewhere and just run the ATX cable in and we'll see if the computer behaves any different. Fire in the hole again. Yeah, I didn't think so. Oh well, it was, it was hopeful thinking. Okay, I've tried another thing, which is repasting the CPU. Probably a waste of my $15 of Arctic Silver 5, but because of the fr frankly terrible design of the socket A chips that just have the tiny little die that makes contact with the heatsink, it is possible that the heatsink just isn't making good thermal contact. So there's plenty of new fresh uh, thermal paste on there. Let's see what it does. Oops, I forgot to plug in the fan. As I suspected. Looks like a waste of my Arctic Silver 5. Well, I have one more thing that I'm going to try. Um, before I declare this motherboard dead. I might... I'm going to my mom's house tomorrow. I might have one of my other Socket A chips. Uh somewhere in storage there. I will look. If I do have it, I think I know where it'll be. 
And if I still have one of my old socket A chips, I'll bring it up here and we'll try it, because maybe it's a bad CPU. So, <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow, I guess. Welcome back. It's the next day. And, uh, I found it. Here is the AMD Sempron that came out of my first custom-built computer. Will the heart of the first new computer I ever had revive this motherboard 18 years later? I guess we're going to find out. I'll, uh... Stick it in there, and then we'll come back and boot it up, hopefully. Okay, CPU's in. Let's see if this does the thing. Nope. Just clicking like before. Well, guys... I'm going to call that a bad motherboard. Um, I, I can't really think of anything more to, uh, to check. Um, you know, even when there's no cards or no RAM in it, it should give a beep test. And it doesn't. It just does that clicking or it does nothing at all. Tried a different power supply. Tried a different CPU. Um, yeah, I, I reseeded the ROM chip even, you know, just in case it was that. Uh, clock batteries fresh. Um, yeah, I'm out of ideas. I mean, it could be something like a bad capacitor. The capacitors all visually look fine, but even if it was something like a bad capacitor, uh, you really can't change out capacitors on this, not without some expensive equipment anyway, because these are multi-layer boards and a normal desoldering tool. I uh, just won't get the solder out. I tried resoldering a mother, or I tried recapping a motherboard once, and uh, I failed miserably. So I am going to call it quits on this motherboard. I, I do wish it had worked. But uh, at the same time, you know, I got a lot of other computers. Way too many for me to give attention to all of them. But uh, yeah, oh, that's too bad. I, I was kind of hoping to be able to go down a little nostalgia trip with a, a VIA chipset based socket A system. So... Thank you for watching. I, I do hope you enjoyed. If you got this far, you know, thank you for uh, for keeping your attention. And I'm, I'm sorry we didn't get the result uh, that we were hoping for. But like I said before, you can't save them all. So thanks so much. And uh, I hope to see you back here again in the next video. And a little uh, announcement before I render this guy out. Um... I played the Mastodon Instance Lottery, and I lost. Uh, the Mastodon Instance that I chose, Mastodon.lol, is shutting down. Um, so I have migrated over to a new instance, so there's a new handle to find me on Mastodon. It's at the Maritime Girl at tech.lgbt. A Mastodon Instance that I almost chose originally, but I think they weren't accepting new invitations at the time. Luckily, they are accepting uh, new members now. So, my Mastodon handles changed. You'll see it in the in the uh, end screen as well. The Maritime Girl at tech.lgbt. So, uh, if you use Mastodon, you can find me on there. Thanks.